guys and welcome back to another tweaker man video so today i'm going to be showing you how to make these stunning wooden speaker stands so i produce these to replace the temporary ones that i made for the mini monitors here so these ones are utilizing um, oak columns and bamboo top plate and bottom plate the top plate is a butcher's block you always find that a uh, that wood on end grain used as a platform or isolation sounds better than wood straight um, so I've used the end grain on the top plate and on the bottom plate I've used an even thicker piece but I couldn't get that in end grain so I managed to just get it in uh, you can see the end grain there but obviously it's not pointing upwards um, so let's have a look at the underneath of this oh and also on the top plate there I've used some small bits of balsa wood on the corners. Now what I've done is I've done only done three little cubes, so stop any micro wobble on the top. Um, let's have a look at the underneath. So here's the underneath. I'm using some oak blocks with these uh, wooden buttons on the top. They're called wooden buttons. They're slightly domed, um, so they work really well. Instead of any spikes, because I'm on a wooden floor and I don't really like spikes on there. And as it, as it is, the, the floor is very level. And these are really big bolts that go straight through into the into the oak. And everything's glued up and, and screwed up really well. And the top plate's using some 75 mil screws straight into the columns as well. So let's head out to the uh, to the studio now and I'll show you how to assemble one of these. So we're in the uh, studio now, and these are all the bits we need to make these stands. Now, I pre-cut everything because these videos are very long-winded, and I find a lot of people get bored of them if they're too long-winded. So um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to fit these up. So this top plate here comes from here, which is a big butcher's block. Okay, on on end grain and it's made of uh, bamboo so the bottom plate is also a chopping board and this one um, is the right width that's the way it come 280 280 mil wide and all I did was chop the ends off and made it square made it 280 by 280 and then we've got our solid oak balustrades or spindles square now they're, they're never totally square these they're always slightly out very slightly out these come from b and q here in the uk which is a a sort of builders merchants come diy store <coughs> so what i'm going to do is get this onto the tripod in a minute but we also need some screws so these are the screws we're using for the top plate and these are like a bolt screw that we're using to screw the uh the spindles up from through the bottom of this um bamboo bottom plate that we're using so these are the other little bits for the bottom okay and these are my four square pieces of oak that i've chopped on the saw that these buttons fit on top of underneath you'll see how you'll get the gist of it as we go along so i'm going to put this in the tripod now and i'm going to show you how to assemble this i mean the reason why i've also cut it all is uh it's self-explanatory how to cut wood everybody knows how to do it and uh it just drags the video out so that's why i've done it this way right so what we need to do first is to um center our top plate in the middle of the uh bottom plate so in able to do this we need to we need to measure it so i'm just using a, a sliding bevel square here to do that with it doesn't get too stiff that's it right so what we need to do is to move that up and we just push it over like that until we get the right the same either side bring it that way a little bit you could just measure it but i like doing it this way right so that's got to come out really slightly there we push that over to there like so 
and right back a tiny little bit there that's it that's spot on spot on both sides now so that's the width is spot on so now we've got to come so what i'm going to do is just put a faint line down here um just there slightly now you have to have a really sharp pencil uh, it's a good idea to have an engineering pencil really and i bought one and can i find it for the life of me it's in here somewhere but it's like organized chaos in this uh, in this studio here Right, so that's got to come over that way slightly. Go over there, slightly down there. Now, everybody's got their own way of working, remember? So, uh, I am very unorthodox in my style of doing a lot of things. Being dyslexic, I could never pick up normal people's ways of doing things. And that, that is why I became self-employed and, and set up my own company to... Uh, to do my furniture restoration and reupholstery because um, I couldn't work for someone else and uh, I didn't need a load of aggro and uh, right so that is spot on there that is spot on there you want to make sure that it's dead 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 correct in the center because you don't want to uh, you want to make sure it's it's even the uh, the weight is evenly spread. It takes a little bit of time, so there's no rush. You don't have to rush it. And the reason I like end grain for the top plate is because I think everything sounds better on end grain. Because when it's on end grain, it's a lot stronger. Because end grain, anything end grain is stronger than, I mean, if you try to dent end grain, it doesn't dent as easy as normal, uh, as normal uh, grain does, where it's across the grain, I should say. Back a little bit there a minute, we've gone over slightly too much there. These are all the bits that take the time, so that's why I had to speed up all the rest of the video there. Right. Oh, that's pretty good now. Hold again slightly. Let's come this way very slightly. That way. Push that that way. That way. Right, I think that's about it. Let's just double check the other way again, quick. about right so what we need to do now is just to get our pencil we're going to draw a line around it first all around so now we want to put let's use this just put a B there for it for back say and um, a B on the underneath of that so we know what way it goes round so now what we're going to do is we're just going to use a bit of double sided tape to glue the two together to start with. The reason being is I need to glue straight through the, um, I need to glue, I need to drill straight through the two bits of wood. So I know I've got my screw hole in exactly the right place, <clears throat> dead in the centre of the other bits of oak, the oak balustrades or oak spindles, whatever you want to call them. So that's that. So let's, let's just really push that down hard onto there. And then we want to take the backing off. Then we want to lower it down onto what I've done there. Is that on there? That's on there. 
Okay. And what we'll do is just remove this. You can remove it with mess otherwise at the end if it don't come off. Pretty easy. Methylated spirits. Right, so there we go. We've got the centre. Bang in the centre there. And all we want to do is just to line this up and lower it down onto it. It's got to be right. You've got to get it dead right because you, as I say, you want the uh, the weight to be evenly distributed across the. Now you can get it if, you, if it's out slightly. You can move it at first until you press it down really well. And that needs to come over very slightly that way. That's it, that's it, that's it. Right, that's perfect there. So all I want to do is just give it a good old push down on there. And now what we do, we come to these corners and we, we offer these little corner, these little pieces of oak, which are the same size as the, uh, as the oak spindles there. All we want to do is just draw around them all because we want to, we want to get our drill hole directly in the centre. There we go. I mean, if they're not, if, if they go out very slightly, it doesn't really matter because we're going to sand them, sand them in at the end, which you'll see. Um, now, I think that, that oak or, um, <clears throat> or bamboo on end grain it's one of the strongest woods you can get on end grain and it's probably the closest thing to metal now a lot of you like metal stands which is great because metal stands are brilliant and um but i, I have a problem with them looking too much like an oil rig and my, my, my channel's not really about looks but um i just feel that that, that, that wood is a natural product as well and it works really well as long as it's the, the, the right type of wood. And I believe that these these are combination of oak and uh, and bamboo is the right way to go with this. Okay, you want to get these dead 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 in the centre. Now I've got the World Cup going on in the background there. And uh, so far Argentina are winning 2 0. So you will know exactly when I'm doing this video now. Now what these what this does effectively at the end, <clears throat> the way this is bolted up and glued together with these these bolts, the, this becomes extremely rigid, and that's what you need for a speaker stand. You don't need it sort of loose or wobbly or um you get what i mean most of you know this but for any newbies watching this channel today you'll uh, you'll get the gist right we're going to head over to the the uh, pillar drill i'm going to drill straight through there so we know our, our hole is dead true going through we don't want it to go on an angle or anything so it's going to be difficult for you to see this i'll try to do it on the angle there so and what we need to do is to, to, to get our drill. We want the drill exactly in that centre. We don't want it to go off at all because the other piece, one of the spindle, all the spindles are going to be directly in the centre as well. Uh, it may go out very slightly and you'll have to sand it in, but be as accurate as you can really with it. So that one's spot on in the centre there. So we're going to flip the drill on. And we're going to take it straight through the two of them. So that's one, it's gone straight through, you can see that there. So we're going to turn it round to here. We want to just take your time, there's no rush on these things. You like to do a job, you've got to get it right. If you want it to really look quality and make it look like you've purchased it from someone, it's always nice to 
make things look like they're, they're, they're done by a professional. Well, I am a professional, but you know, you get what I, what the gist of what I'm trying to say. So we go straight through there again. centered again same with this one now lower it down so we can get it smack in the center where it needs to go all you do is just press it down slightly you can do it with a hand drill the problem with electric hand drill is is you can't tell whether the the drills going through straight through it could be going out and now that's no good really I will be contradicting myself slightly in a minute though, because when it comes to drilling out the uh, the, the oak spindles, I can't get them on here because they're too long. So I have to use the uh, I have to use the battery drill and drill down, and hopefully I can get it exactly in the right place. Right, look, that's spot on again. Couldn't have done that better. Look at that spin. That is lovely, jubbly. Right, here we go. So here's our four holes drilled perfectly in the centre. Right, so let's head back over to the uh, to the bench and we'll sort the rest out now. Right, so while we've got this still <coughs> taped onto here, we want to just uh, countersink the top the top plate here. Okay, so we've got our countersink to it. We want to put a really nice counter bore in the top of it. Right, so now the trickiest part now is to get this off here now. So we just have to use a mallet and a block of wood. Okay, so that's it. So we've removed the block now off of there. And this is our tape here that we want to take off. We're just going to take that off like that. It's so easy to do it like this. Otherwise, what you'll find is the two pieces will be moving about. And we don't want that happening. Um, left a bit of stickiness on there so what I'm going to do is get some mess in a minute and just wipe that off because uh, it's going to interfere with when it comes to staining it up staining them up we don't want to be uh, staining them up with uh, with sticky sticky on there so all we're going to do is use a bit of mess here just to remove any residue that the uh, double-sided tape has left uh, Argentina still winning 2-0 Looks like the uh, the World Cup's going there this year. Or did I say it? There we go. So. Let's give it a really good rub because it takes a bit to get it off. And then what will happen is, is this tape is going to interfere with the... Uh, with the gluing process, which we don't want to happen either. Right. right that's all gone from there. So you can see once this is stained it's going to be stained the same uh, color as my cabinets in there like a tiki sort of a cherry color 
So uh, you'll see all the end grain that stand out really nicely once they're all properly polished and that. <clears throat> right, so what you'll find now is the holes haven't gone straight through to the back there. So what I've got to do then is to put another drill bit in and uh, drill through, straight through. So I need to get the right size drill bit again. Um, it's the next size up, which is a six mil. Because these bolts are quite thick, you see, you see, it needs to be a big hole. So let's just take our. Right, I'm just gonna take it over on the side here. There we go. So we've had a tiny little bit of spit out there, which is fine. That one hasn't actually, oh, there's a bit of spit out there, look. That's all right. I'm gonna do some uh, tiny little filling bits at the end once we've uh, bolted it all together. Right, so we don't, we haven't got a sound, uh, a countersink these because these bolts are gonna go straight in and go over the top of them now. So, what I want to do now <clears throat> is I've got to put these to one side and then I'm going to show you how to do these bits again. So what we're going to be doing here is just going across the grain from corner to corner to get the center. You need to get that as accurate as possible because you don't want it to be going over at all. What I'll do is I'll drill one of them, then I'm going to drill them all. And then just to give you an idea of how they go. Um, now, let's just double check that this is the right size drill bit for that. Yeah. I'm going to go slightly smaller. So that, that was a six mil drill, and I'm going to pop down to a, a five and a half mil because I need to make sure that that really fits in, in the, uh, with the bolt. Right, so that should do it. That should be dead perfect now. So it's going to be difficult to show you on here. You want to get that dead centred again. That's it. Right, now if you just hold it down there. You might not be able to see this too well on there. But you want to try to... So there we go, that's dead centred now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round and drill them all and then I'll be back in a second. So when you're drilling out this, this piece, the base, it's always best to drill this onto another piece of wood. So when you drill through, you don't split the, the, out, the back out. I did that, I just, it's only that these are going to cover it up. So I filled those bits and they're, they're going to cover it up anyway. That's what I did when I built the other stand. Right, so we've got this now, like this. We pre-drilled all the uh, all the ends of the uh, the spindles or the balustrades or whatever you want to call them. Now, what we want to do is just put a bit of PVA glue. Um, I'm running out, so I'm going to have to put that on my list of new stuff to get. So we just want to put a little bit of PVA glue around here. And that'll squeeze out to the edges and the sides. And what we need to do is we need to uh, get our right piece. <coughs> these are star. These are like, I can't remember what you call these fittings now. They're like a security fitting. 
they're like a star and they fit in there by the way france has come back and it's 2-2 blimey while i've been away just doing this it's now 2-2 which i saw the goals go in by the way while i was uh... so what we need to do now is we just need to get our bolt into the um push it through very slightly through the bottom here and what i like about these bolts put my fingers in there don't do that what i like about these bolts is they seem to screw in really well because of the uh the fitment on the end so here we go what I want to do as well, go through slightly so it just sticks out the other side and then just stick a bit of glue on the end of here as well. So I want to make sure that this is just glued in really well. We don't want anything coming loose over a period of time. It won't with those size bolts. But um, there we go. So we've just got to offer that up to there like that. Then we need to start to hold that in there and screw that through. get through there gently like that because what we want to do is we want to try to make sure that it's dead square now because there's nothing worse than it being not not square enough now you can see how these these are not square these posts they're, they're slightly out these uh, these balustrades from which uh, b and q now you can buy these online Right. So online you can pay around about £7.80 for 900 mil length. Right. Now B&Q, they used to be £8.49. Now the reason why I didn't buy them online is because I wanted to get this done. I had a short period of window to fit these in. So I had to go to B&Q. And, and what I've paid for them there is, is considerably more £12.49 £12 I think. Which is way too much really for them but so what i would advise they're 41 mil by 41 mil what i would advise advise is you buy them online really and get them delivered but because of the postal strikes in the uk at the moment um i'm trying to avoid using the post office anything to do with the post office because it's just at the moment only at the moment i mean now you've, you've got to try to get this square as you screw this up it tend has a tendency to want to move there we go that's it right that's spot on there now that is absolutely wonderful right so now we've just got to repeat the uh, process and put all the four on there so you see how i've done that so i'm going to do that now and i'll be back in a second so here we have it i've uh, attached the columns they're all screwed in and glued in and now I've just got to attach the top. So I'll show you how to do that now. So what we need to do is just to put some glue on our pieces here. If we want to screw these down. Right, so now I just want to put the screws in because I want to get them all lined up. Remembering I've put a little B on the back there. So that is going to line up with the back of the, uh, of the main plate at the bottom. Now, when you screw these top plates on, you've got to be very careful not to ram it in too hard and split the wood out, you see. So that one's going to go in there, that one's going to go in there. Okay, that one goes in there and that one's that one's not in place yet. We'll move that one in a minute. So you'll find that you always have to plane this down slightly to get it... Oh, that's gone in lovely now. Just, just nip it up. Don't go too hard with it at the moment. You don't really want to sort of screw it in too hard. 
Turn it round, same with this end, you hear. That's it. And the same, this one here needs to move out slightly. That's it. Yeah. Right, now what I would suggest is you just go around and tighten it up a slight little bit, just so the glue oozes out there. You can see the glue coming out. That's it. Right, okay. That's it. So, I've sanded them all in. They've come out lovely. Ooh! Cool. Do you know the game? It's gone 3 3 now in the World Cup final. Hey! Look at that. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Now, what we need to do is just to fit on the oak blocks on the underneath. So we'll do that now. Right, so we've got our blocks. So we're, we're doing a free, free block formation. And um, why do we do that? Because it stops micro wobble. And I'm not using any spikes with these. They're just having the wooden buttons on the underneath of them, which work really well. And you'll see once they're fitted. <clears throat> So it looks like this game is going to go to penalties unless someone can score in the dying seconds. Which is going to be rather interesting. Right, so <clears throat> what we want to do is just to get our G clamp on there. We want to clamp these down nice and solid, nice and strong. That goes, put a bit of something on the underneath of it to stop the clamp from digging into the wood. I'll just use a bit of old, uh, the old paper there from the sander. It'll move, it always moves, so you've got to just get it into the right position. That's perfect there. Hold it there while you tighten it a bit more. That's perfect, look at that. Right, we'll just wipe the excess glue off. There we go. That's one. Now, the World Cup final's gone to penalties, it looks like. So I'm going to get this done quick and then leave this to dry for a bit and pop inside and watch it with my son because he loves penalty shootouts. Oh, it's not actually ended yet. No, it's still going. Sorry. Right, OK, same thing with this again. We want to get our uh, G clamp going. That's it. Right, just stick a piece under there again. Right, we want to try to. What happens is, is when you try to screw the uh, the clamp down, the block tends to slide slightly. So you've got to try to, that's it, that's perfect, look at that, that's brilliant. Right, so now we've just got to measure the back piece, because we've got to make sure we get the, um, we get the, uh, the block directly in the centre. Okay, so we've got our pencil, and now we're trying to find the tape measure. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Sorry, the game's still going on at the moment. So this, this measures 280, right? So we want to get the, the centre is going to be 14. <clears throat> there we go. Right, so we'll just push that onto there. Get that, turn that round so you can see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to use my sliding bevel. It's gone to penalties, the uh, World Cup final. <laughs> I hope you like my running commentary. It's not my forte really, but... 
So if we push that over like that, get that over there like that. Oh, look at that, spot on. Perfection. So we've just got to clamp that one down and I'm going to shoot in quick and watch the penalties go in. That doesn't bother me who wins anyway, so. Now that's moved again. So I've just got to tighten that down a bit. Right, just go back with that again. That's spot on still, it hasn't gone anywhere. Right, so. Let's leave this to dry now for a bit. And uh, I'll be back soon to glue the buttons on. And then we can take it from there. So I've removed the... Uh, <clears throat> the clamps now of the blocks in the corner and these are the buttons they're domed they're like slightly domed if i can show you on the side there there we go anyway they, they work really well so what we, we need to do is just to stick a piece of a bit of glue on the back of these okay that's not there you go get a bit of glue on the back of that And then all we want to do is just we're just going to put one in each corner over here push it down into place there we go one in each corner now you could say why why am i not putting this in the center i want to put it to the edge to give it more stability Down. And one at the back in the middle. I'm just guessing the middle there. I sort of can guess it. It's pretty, pretty easy. It's about like move over slightly. That's it. Perfect. Right. So I've just got to leave those to dry for a. Uh, half an hour or so and then we'll turn them over and we'll fit on the uh the balsa wood blocks on the top right so i'm back in the av room now and we just want to stick these little blocks in the corners now these are our balsa wood blocks right okay so i've put a bit of glue on them a bit of pva just want to push those down into place make sure they're all nice and My balsa wood is great at absorbing vibration. That's why I want to put it at the top. I'll get that dead in the centre there. That's it. Right, okay, we'll just leave that to dry now. And then I'll be back once they're dried. So here we have the new speaker stands all set up. <coughs> Obviously, they've got to be uh, final sanding and a good polished to make them the same color they're all going to be polished they're probably not going to be done for a week or so because i've got so much work to finish off before christmas for people but um as you can see and i'll tell you what it's definitely improved the sound quality over these ones they're not too bad actually i did a good job of making those but um these are gonna these these have uh, taken these speakers to a, a you know a step up again which is uh, I'm really pleased with. So all in all, it's quite good. What I'll do is I'll uh, put all the links of where to get the parts to build these if you want to build a set. Obviously, you can make them whatever height you like. Um, what I did with these is I reduced the height of these by about 20 mil because these ones were slightly taller and, and really your ear needs to be directly between the woofer and the tweeter. And with those ones, I thought I got it right, but I didn't. It was just slightly too high, so I reduced it a bit. But as I say, I hope you like this video. Um, I think these have come up absolutely splendid. They look really stunning. And once they're polished and they match all the rest of the furniture, it's really going to set them off. So I think it, that's it for this video. So um, thank you.
Thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to press that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And thank you for watching, guys.